So today we are talking about the importance of taking breaks at work. It is very important to take breaks at work. In fact, the more breaks you take, the more productive you will be. Predominant management thinking, as an example, is such that you will have you know, better productivity if you don't take breaks at work, or if you delegate more, or if you're better at you management, self-management, people management, time management. None of that is true. In fact, from the brain science, we know that in order to be more productive, you need to take breaks according to energy management principles. And so today, we are talking about how to manage your energy in order to take breaks properly to be your most productive self at work. So in part one, we're talking about the importance of taking breaks at work. Now here's what's interesting. In the industrial revolution in the 1870s, most of the factories were predicated on the idea that workers were basically like machines and that breaks or taking breaks was really just a waste of time. No productivity happened, nothing got done, and so breaks are a real decrement to productivity. All of the research shows that from a brain-based perspective, you need breaks. In fact, you are not a machine, you're nothing like it. You need more breaks, not less. You, when you should be taking breaks, what you should be doing on those breaks in order to increase your productivity. When should you be taking breaks? I need to show you this image. This is the image of what we call the ultradian cycle. The ultradian cycle shows us that the brain actually works on a wavelength just like your body. You've probably heard of a circadian rhythm or a circadian cycle. That's a 24 hour cycle that your body works on. Okay, so that takes you from day to night, light to dark, hungry, thirsty. And you're not surprised to hear that the circadian rhythm is a 24 hour cycle. What researchers in the 1950s figured out was that your brain doesn't work on a circadian cycle. It actually works on an ultradian cycle. Here's what they found. The ultradian cycle means that our brain can actually only focus for about 90 minutes in a row before it needs a break. And as you can see from this graph, it actually needs a break of at least 20 minutes. Now here's what's interesting. This research was done in the 1950s and it wasn't popularized until about the 1980s. What we know is that with technology the way that it is, in fact, this cycle has shortened. And so it's very likely that you don't even have 90 working minutes of productivity in your brain. It's much more likely that you have something closer to about 45 minutes. Now here's the thing. The question often happens, how long should we be taking breaks for? Well, 20 minutes was the norm in 1950, but this is shortened as well. And so what we think now is your ideal length of time, and research shows this, the ideal length of time is about 15 minutes. Between 15 and 20 minutes is this little sweet spot in terms of allowing your brain to reset, to get over its stress response, to rejuvenate, and be ready to go again so that you're much more productive when you come back from break. What this means is you should be organizing your day, not like a marathon, but like like a series of sprints. So plan your work in 45 minute increments with a 15 to 20 minute break in there, and then your brain will be that much easier to reset, restart, and be productive again. What should you do on your breaks to be the most productive? Well, I have a couple of don'ts for you. One of the don'ts, do not isolate yourself. Sounds counterintuitive, right? Doesn't it feel like on a break you should go and take time for yourself? Yes, sometimes, if what you're doing on those breaks is, as an example, visualizing or meditating. However, what we've shown, what the research shows, is that if one of the things you do on your breaks is socialize, then you are that much more likely to be more productive when you get back to your work or to the office. Why is that? Let me show you this image. Here we see this is more or less neuroanatomically correct when we look at the number of neural networks in your brain, what we see is that a lot of your neural networks, and this, by the way, very exciting stuff out of neuroscience. This is stuff we figured out in the last seven years or so. About 80% of all of your neural networks are involved in social processing. And so if on your 20, 15 to 20 minute breaks, you socialize, we actually see that people who socialize when they go back to work are more productive, not less. On your breaks, you shouldn't just socialize. You should also have a nap 
if you would like a nap. That will also help your brain get back into being more productive after the break. You can also, as an example, have some caffeine. I know coffee lovers out there love this information. What research has shown is that caffeine does help your brain when you are back to the job. It helps you be a lot more productive. Now here's another thing I want you to do, and I know it sounds really simple, but a lot of people miss this, and that's to make sure to hydrate. Make sure that you, are, you have a little bit of water on your break, take a break, walk away from what you're doing, and make sure that you hydrate. As it would turn out, by the time you actually feel thirsty, your cells are already dehydrated, and your cells give up water last. Your brain gives up water first. It's very hard to be a productive person if your brain has no water to operate. So if you wanna maximize your breaks even further, I have another secret, and that is that you should do something fun. You should enter into what neuroscientists call a state of play in your mind. But even if that's a video game, if that's a competition with friends, however that is, you should enter into a state of play that allows that you feel like those 15 to 20 minutes off are in fact off and like they're fun. So do something that you think is fun and research shows that when you go back to work, you will be that much more productive. I have another secret. I call this unfocusing to focus, but what it is is the idea that when you take your break, those 15 to 20 minutes, really zone out. And by that I mean don't focus on anything. There's a reason for it. The more that you unfocus, the more likely it is that you're able to listen to your subconscious, that you're able to go through that remedial response so that when you do go back to work, you're much more creative, you're more innovative, and the parts of your brain that you didn't know you weren't listening to actually start to be able to act in your favor. And so we've shown through the research, we've seen that people who make sure to unfocus on their breaks are much better at focusing once they're back on the job. Okay, how do you maximize your breaks to make sure that you're the most productive person possible? Last piece of advice, and that is that on those breaks, while I want you to unfocus, eat, drink caffeine, eat, drink water, I also want you to move around as much as possible. Movement, as it turns out, is like magic to your brain. What it does is it, as you physically exercise, it exercises your knowledge, memory, learning networks. And so what we've shown is that for people who exercise, and I do not mean like P90X, I mean people who move around a little bit on their breaks are actually that much more creative, that much happier working, that much more productive, more motivated when they get back to work. So on your breaks, make sure that you are physically moving around, even just a little walk, even just a stroll, so that those knowledge networks get activity as well. You will be much happier, much more productive when you get back to work afterward. So I'm curious, how many breaks have you been taking at work? How many breaks will you take now? Please comment below, let us know. I hope this helps.